Hello, welcome to my tutorial on assembling the um, automata simulation for activity 4.5 that allows us to uh, measure the amount of linear motion that you get when you turn the crank and the cam um, pushes one of the follower rods up and down. Um, this will be the basis of a project that we'll be doing later in the semester, so it's important that we uh, learn how to assemble this properly. So to start with, I have Inventor open, and you can see here are my four cams that I have assembled. Um, I've actually also gone in and I have added the work planes and features um, that were asked for in step four of activity 4.5. So make sure you do that first. There's a video on the Project Lead the Way website that walks you through that. So. What I'm going to do, um, you can see I don't have a project for the simulation. Uh, the good news is that I've added it to your um, Project Lead the Way um, IED shared folder. So if you go into Projects up here, so here I've opened it up, Projects, instead of creating a new one, all you're going to have to do is browse for it. Um, so this is my Activity 4.5 folder, and you can see there's the folder, uh, the, the project that's in that folder. What I want to do is just go back to my IED00 folder for whatever yours is, um, and you'll see in there I have created a folder called Activity 4.5 Day 2 Simulation. Go ahead and open Open that and inside of there is a project called Automata Simulation. Click on it, hit open, you'll see that it selects it and then you'll go ahead and hit done. Now, I've already opened this, so all of my cams appear. You'll probably just see two files, one that says Automata Simulation and another one that says Automata Simulation. You'll notice that there's a difference. This is actually Automata Simulation Test, and that is the one that we want to assemble because this is what we are going to be doing later on in the activity. So even though this one's got a fancy box, you can ignore the one with the fancy box and pick the one that looks like it has a ruler on it. So let's go ahead and open it. Um, so, what you can see when you open up the assembly is that it has um, some work features already in it. I'm actually going to go ahead and have us add just one more. Um, it's not really necessary, but it's a little visually easier for us. So the very first thing I want you to do is find the thing um, that looks like it's the rod, it's got this little um, round shape, D-shaped thing on the bottom. Just double click on it. And when you double click on it, you'll notice it takes us into 3D model mode. This allows us to add some things on it as though we were making or modifying an inventor part, even though this is an assembly of many parts. All I want to do is add a mid plane between this side and then the one on the other side of it. So up here under plane, select mid plane between two planes. And then I'm going to click, so I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to click on that D shaped thing and I'm going to use my view cube and zoom around to the other side and select the one that looks just like it on the other side and now you will see here's this lovely plane that goes right down the middle. When I'm finished to get back to the assembly features I want to go up in the upper corner and click on return and here I am. Now I am ready to place the cam. Now I have assigned you one of the four cams that we've modeled and I've given you the dimension that I want for you to have for D. Um, I am going to show you how to do this with the hex cam and then you um, will do this with whichever of the cams um, that are required. And I will do my best to add um, extra tutorials showing you some special things about the snail cam and the pear cam which might make it a little more difficult. But first to start with, um, I will show you with the hex cam and this should work just fine with either the hex or with the eccentric cam. So I'm going to go up here and make sure this says place. If it says place from content center, please use the drop down menu and change it so that it just is place. And when you click place, it's going to open up the um, folder that I placed in there and that hopefully you have saved your cams in. Um, you probably only have saved one cam in there because that's the one that I've assigned you. I have all of them in mind so that I can demonstrate. So here's my hex cam and you can see there it is. It's, I have added the work features as were requested. So I will go ahead and hit open and then I'm just going to plop it down anywhere. Um, I'm going to hit escape now because I only need one of them and then I'm going to zoom in a little. The very first thing that we're going to do to constrain this so that it is actually underneath here under the follower 
is I'm going to do a constraint and you can actually make constraints between two axles. So you can see there's this straight line sticking out through the axle that um, this is going to be um, following or sliding on. And then here's the axle that goes through the, the axis that goes through the hole in the middle of my cam. So if I click on this one and then on this one, you may hear that little noise. Um, you can see it lines them up and then you'll hit OK. And you'll see that this allows it to just kind of slide. Now it will not move off of that axle. So that's good. The second thing we need to do, because I can turn the handle, but you'll notice the cam doesn't turn with it. So what I want to do is I want to create a constraint between this plane and the one underneath it. Now you'll notice that that plane was orange and you'll also see this plane is orange. If they're the same color, you'll probably want to use a flush. That will just make it stick the um, same direction. If one is orange and the other is blue, uh, you can use a mate and that will stick them together. E either way, it should work. Um, it might flip your handle around, but don't worry about that. Uh, as soon as you hear that click, you can hit OK. And now you'll notice as you turn the uh, handle, the cam moves with it. So um, third, what we want to do, and don't worry about the handle kind of flopping around, we want this um, cam to be lined up underneath the follower. So I'm going to just do a little movement with my view cube so you can see what I mean. Do you see how there is, remember that one that we made at the beginning, this work plane right here that slices this down the middle? What I want to do is line up this cam um, plane, one that is under here, with this plane that I made. Uh, that's sort of like taking two things, like slice them down the middle, and then just lining them up with each other. So I can see this one's orange and this one's blue. And that means that I'm looking at opposite sides of um, that plane, um, just like the top and the bottom of a piece of paper. So if they're opposite, then I want to do a mate constraint. I click on the work plane that's through my cam. And I click on the one that I made earlier that is uh, slices that rod follower on the top in half. And you'll see that now they line up. You'll hit OK. And you can tell they have now lined up squarely down the middle. OK, so that's just getting everything into place. The very last thing that I want to do is I actually want to create what's called a transitional constraint, a constraint that allows me to move this. And while this is moving, it will move this follower up and down just like it would in real life. Because in real life, this would sit on here. And as the cam turned, the um, follower would drop because of gravity. Now, there's no gravity in Inventor, so we have to kind of trick it. And essentially what we're going to be doing is that we are going to be making a constraint between this round edge and the flat edge or the circular edge of um, the cam. In this case, it's a flat edge because it's a, it's a hex cam. So um, first, make sure that you've given yourself a little bit of space between these um, cams. And then it's easiest to kind of try to have sort of a flat surface to work with. So I've turned my handle so that I have an easy way of, uh, of seeing the top of my hex cam. And then it's pretty straightforward. Um, when I go into constraint, all we have ever done is the assembly constraint. You're going to want to move over and skip motion. I know that seems like maybe what we're doing, but we actually want transitional. It allows them things to kind of slide past each other. So when one thing moves, the other transitions past it. And um, this is the only type of con uh, con transitional constraint we have where something that's curved kind of slides along something else. So when I have transitional constraint selected, I'm first going to zoom in and make sure that I get that bottom curved surface on the bottom of the follower. So I click there first. And then I can zoom out and use my view cube. And I want to get one of these sides, not the edge, not the corner, but one of the sides on my hex cam. And when you do that, you'll hear it make that noise. And the um, rod will drop down and slide along the top of the hex cam. And you'll hit OK. 
And now as I turn this, magic happens, um, and you can see that the cam bounces up and down. And you're going to need this because as we turn this, you are going to be measuring um, in the later part of this activity how much vertical motion happens as you turn your cam. So make sure that before you close this, you hit File Save. You don't have to do a Save As. Um, if it asks you if you want to save uh, changes to everything, say yes to all, and then hit OK, and then hit OK again. Um, if it says the data format has changed, it's probably because Project Lead the Way sent us these files, and they may have used an older version of Inventor. But that's it. That's all that you need to do. So thanks for watching.